So welcome back to another episode. And today we are very excited to talk about some of our memories playing Street Fighter Alpha 2. Now this is a game from well, now from our childhoods actually. It's really weird, you know, how far Street Fighter has come over the years and things like that. But our favorite, you know, my personal favorite. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, is definitely Alpha 2. And I actually had to dust off the old PlayStation 1. This is my original PlayStation 1. And it took me back to when I first got my PlayStation 1. And I was looking at all the games that were coming out and Alpha 2 was, I was like, oh my god, I can't wait. So obviously we've been playing Street Fighter 2 and it all of a sudden Alpha you know, 2 was coming out. And this was the most exciting thing, like Alpha 1 came out and I, yeah. I played that in the arcades and I liked it. But Alpha 2 kind of was building on that, adding more characters, more stages. And I loved it. And I remember when I first got this game and plugged it in that first night, it was just amazing to be able to play the arcade game at home perfectly. To me, it was perfect. Man, I, I remember the first night sitting in, in my parents' basement. <laughs> you know, you have to sit in your parents' basement and be playing video games, as you said back then. And I remember I was smoking, and I was having a couple of beers, and everybody had gone to bed in the house, and I was just playing it on my own. I'm like, this is just awesome. I was having a moment. And I was playing Sakura's stage, uh, you know? And that, and it's so funny, I actually just let the game play so I could hear Sakura's music. I like the music so much. And I, I just remember sitting there going, this is, this is a good time in gaming. And yeah. it was. And we look back now and we kind of call it our golden era only because this is kind of what we grew up with. This is our, yeah. this was our Street Fighter for our generation. This is the game that we played so much of. So please rhyme yeah. in because. Yes. Yeah. Now, now for me, I, when I had my Super Nintendo, I had played Street Fighter 2. It was the first game I got for it, like so many people. Uh, this had to get it launch day kind of thing. And I loved it. I wasn't very good at it. I'd seen it in the arcades a few times. Starting to hang out with John, one of the first rules was you, you better be able to play Street Fighter. And I couldn't. It was evident the first time we played. Uh, and I got absolutely soundly thrashed. And that began what was literally training. And it was train. It was not, oh, I'll teach you how to play. Yeah. It was like boot camp. Because we sat down, and I'll never forget this. He put the game in, he sat down, and he said, okay, I'm going to train you in Street Fighter. I'm going to teach you combo theory. I'm going to teach you how to do this, how to do that. I'm going to teach you all these things. And I chose Ryu. He chose Ken. I was always Ken. Always Ken. Yeah. And we started on the Ryu stage. It was the first one I saw with all the snow on the ground. Yeah. And he would actually, when, when he was teaching me in game, he pushed the light punch button so Ken's fist was going, because that was him talking to me. Now you have to learn how to do combos. It was really funny. We were being we were funny, we were being funny. so we actually had the characters teaching each other, you know, while I was teaching Rob how to play Street Fighter through that. I thought it was kind of, we were having a bit of fun. Yeah. But also, I wanted Rob to get really good because this is before online gaming. So yeah. I wanted somebody, to, you know, to play against somebody who could, like, be up to my level at then. And I was, this was my top game. Like, oh I know this is, this is Super Street Fighter 4 now, and there's all these you know arcade editions, all this. And I'm not this one. I'm not great at those, but uh, this was the game I was great at. There's we all have those moments in our lives when we have this one game we were particularly good at. He's very, very good. And he wants to teach me to be on his level. That takes him doing, because Street Fighter 2 alone, this guy was almost untouchable. In fact, as far as I saw, I never saw him beat at Street Fighter 2, the original arcade game. So I practiced. We played what hours hours and, every that, day. and that's the, that's the thing every this is day. you know when you buy a game and you get your money's worth this game i i, I swear to god we got like five thousand dollars worth of game time Eas out of it easily we easily we play you know, honestly we would play this like six hours a, a day. day daily every day yeah, yeah. Uh, we had neither of us had jobs we had no responsibilities what a not back, life not back then and rob, rob would come over in the morning and we'd have tea, breakfast, all that. Yeah. And we'd hang out. And we'd just go to the basement. This is what we do for six Street. hours a day, every day. I mean, like, this is what we did. It, to, you know? to the point that it was like tea working its way into beer into the evening. And we drank like a six pack each pack that almost. Just yeah. drinking and playing Street Fighter every night. And then the next day we'd do it again. Yeah. But practicing, practicing, practicing. Playing. I mean, we'd play other characters just to break, sort of the, break into some of the fun, silly stuff and just enjoy. But yeah practicing and the training because it got to the point where I could go to arcades and I could clean up on other guys. Yeah. Never this guy. Yeah. Never this guy. I've maybe beat you a round or two here and there. But most, I mean, it, but the rivalries, we would always go infinite time. 
Yeah. And and no handicaps on either side. Of course. And uh, three rounds. And the battles, we had we had rounds that would last half an hour. Yeah. Like, we'd have to pause it and put it down and kind of walk away from it, shake out the hands and come back. Yeah. They, they, got re they were so intense. Oh and, and, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I know I become the bastard again, and I can handle it. I can handle it. I was. Oh so me. I, I, you know what so though? It mean. wasn't only to you. It was to Andrew everybody. and everybody. No, to everybody. Everybody. Even the girl I was oh going at the time. I was like brutal <laughs> with her. I taught her how to play street really good. The thing is, is I w I just I love I I I had so much fun. It was a video game, and I really enjoyed it a lot. That I loved bugging people while I was playing the game. I like was notoriously. Evil oh. for doing it. Oh, okay, like to the point that okay, it started off enough that he was like, "You lose again! I can't believe it! You suck! I can't believe you could lose this much!" And it worked into, "You're a fucking clown! Oh, yeah, I yeah. trounced you! I wasn't even trying!" To the point that he put the controller behind his back and look over here and play, and he'd still beat me. To the point that he would then get up, he'd throw the controller in his lap. Be like, "I played with my cock and I fucking beat you." <laughs> to the point that he he eventually got up. And he picked up his old blanket off the couch, mm. and he draped it around my shoulders, no, and no. he put a pair of sunglasses on me, he said, That's the cloak of shame and the sunglasses of denial, because you suck. But wasn't that because of, we were having a, I remember that one in particular. Well that was, oh that's right, because he did, okay. Sakura was one of the favorite characters you like to play, and Once in, a while, yeah, yeah. in Alpha 2, specifically, when you did a custom combo victory, you got a specific icon for each character. Like, Ryu had a fist, Ken, Ken was the fingers the, doing yeah. this thing. Sakura had the little schoolgirl Sailor Moon outfit. And his ideal thing was to try and get, we do when we do five rounds, three of them in a row. He wanted three Sailor Moon outfits. Now, the other thing that was... That was the ultimate victory. Like, that, that was like but, really... But yeah. to take this over the top, over the top. Remember, there was taunting in these games. He finished me three rounds in a row with the custom combo finish with Sakura, but on the final one, yeah, his last part of the custom attack was the taunt where she points and laughs, and the poke in the eye was what killed me. The poke in the eye... Um, it, it was, it was a, an epic battle. And that was, I mean, there's no way to top that kind of a victory run. Three and that's when numbers. I got the cloak of shame. The and glass, the sunglasses of denial. I was brutal, and I, uh, I remember I bugged... I, I bugged you in Street Fighter so much that one day it was me and Andrew and you in the basement and I was just being notoriously bad, uh, notoriously mean, and you just finally threw the controller down, said fuck this shit, and you fucking, you went up the stairs yeah. and slammed the door, and yeah. it was like, he goes, hey yeah, fuck you, and closed the door, yeah, and he's gone. I was like foaming at the mouth, I was so angry, he was actually spitting. But he was taunting so mercilessly, and Andrew was laughing, and I just lost. I was like, oh, shit, I've had enough of this shit. I think I didn't talk to you for like a day after that, and then I phoned you up. I was like, um, hey, can sorry, I, but. Can, can I come back over and play Street Fighter? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I lost my temper. Can I you know, over? And, and, and yeah, and, and it's so funny when video games can become so real like that, and so strange and surreal, right? Like, and we, that's the thing, we played the game so much because we didn't have a lot of games, so, yeah. and we loved it. We didn't, we didn't care for any other games. We kept playing this one over and over and over consistently. You, you, you were so rough on me because you were trying to force me to get angry and fight back and get better. And I get that now. I didn't then. <laughs> well, I, I know, no, I was, time. I was over the top, you know. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so let's talk about some of the things that we like about the game. Oh, uh, man. Like, okay, first of all, the animation is just gorgeous. Like, yeah. the sprites were big and beautiful. Yeah. There's a lot of detail. Yeah. Uh, I really liked it. I liked the designs that they went for making the characters look younger, because this is set before Street Fighter 2. Yeah. That's why they called it Alpha or Zero in Japan. Um, and... The the music and the stages. Yeah, the music and stages. You know the one thing. I, the one thing I want to talk about is I remember when I was first playing it that first night. You know, in my parents' basement. I was in Gen stage, and I just oh. remember it. So it sounds so ridiculous nowadays with the games now. But when my character's running through, it's a back alley stage, and there's water. There's like yes. a little, little thing of water there, and you actually hit the water, and the little you know, little uh, like uh, effect. Yeah, little there. ripples. Little ripples. Yeah. I mean, I'd never seen anything like that. And I remember sitting there that night, drinking and smoking, going, "Oh wow, this is so amazing." And then the the characters look like uh, anime characters. Yes. In, in the sense of the actually the animation was so good. And the colors were so vibrant. It actually, you felt like you were playing an anime. It's funny we've gone. We were just playing in the other room. Yeah. We think it still holds yeah. up extremely well. Yes. You know, it's. Yeah. Uh, but we had our favorite stages. You know, we always used to pick. Uh, <laughs> actually, we were talking like Ken's stage was a favorite of ours. They always had all. All, all of the the there were cameos galore. Now this, yeah. 
this was Capcom's golden age, especially not just of gaming, but for Capcom, they were still in the arcade market and on top. They were on fire yeah. with it. They had so many amazing, like everything they did was gold. And they did little crossover nods for the fans like this. Ken Stage on his yacht, it's, it's his wife Eliza's birthday. And there's the big party in the background. You've got Captain Commando. And you've got uh, Morgan, Felicia, Morgan, um, Strider. Yeah, uh, Lin uh, Kusawa from uh, Alien uh, vs. Predator. That's right, on, she's on, in the, the pool. arcade game, yeah. Yeah, she's hanging out in the pool. Yeah. It's just like this plethora of other characters yeah. in the background cheering and watching what's going on and uh, just really nice animated layered backgrounds. The music in that stage is, because we played yeah. it so much, you were always Ken. We're so funny, we were in the other room and we're playing it. And we're just like, oh shit, remember this music. And because we had listened to this music so, so much, much over and over and over and over and over yeah. that it has become like that time. Yes. That, that, that yeah. music is from that time. And it takes us right back there. It's amazing how that does. I can see, every time I hear it, I can see that basement, with the, the sort of the brown, fairly threadbare <laughs> carpet that, from sitting in front yeah. of the TV and uh, the, the chairs and the way that the furniture was arranged, everything yeah. in perfect detail. And we always sat on the floor, side by side like this. And that's the thing, yeah, that's, that's also, that was something, we're sitting in the room on my couch and we're playing, and I was like, man, this feels weird. Yeah. I haven't played in a few years. I'm like, this feels weird. And I remembered why is because this this and like yeah. there's a reason for this. Um, we'd always sit on the floor to play Street Fighter. We'd yeah. always sit on the, the, the floor. There's carpet on the floor, but it was a hard basement floor type of yeah. thing. And the reason why I figured out the reason why, and I still kind of sit on the floor still to this day in this room. Yeah. To play games, I figured out the reason why is because video game machines, the controllers were so short. Yeah. I had to sit on the floor yeah. to get close, and that's where that routine came from. Yep. You know, if I had wireless controllers, we would have been way back or something back then, but uh, we weren't, so. So yeah, we gotta talk about some of the characters in this game, and uh, I know one particular character that you loved, and I, I loved as well, is the, the, the joke character, per se? Dan Hibiki. Uh, I mean, he showed up in the first alpha as like a secret sort of hidden character, and the history to this guy is amazing. I mean, Street Fighter 2 comes out to glorious fanfare in the arcades, and uh, SNK makes a game called Art of Fighting, which is, eh, a lot of people would have considered it like a, a, a not exactly a clone, uh, but, it, but because it, Street Fighter was fighting the first game. fighting game, and it was the first kind of a competition, really. Uh, for Besides it. Fail Fury. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So they made this game, and it had a character named Robert and a character named Ryo. And Ryo had the sleeves ripped off karate gi outfit with a black t-shirt under it, but it was a bright orange. And and Robert, and they both also threw fireballs, but yeah. one-handed. Robert Robert really was Steven Seagal, too. Yes. Like, that has to be said. Yeah, the little, the little hair with the ponytail. But um, as a tongue-in-cheek joke to this, uh, the concept art for Saget for Street Fighter Alpha had him holding a character by the head that had the head of Robert Garcia and the body of Rio from Art of Fighting. Yeah. And so it was kind of like a little tongue in cheek joke, but they actually turned him into a character. And I mean, he's Dan Hibiki and he's got a fireball that only goes like this far and yeah, he's got yeah. a really weak technique. He's a very loose, sloppy stance. Great colors. Bright colored oven, bright pink instead of orange. But he's got the same outfit as Rio and the head of Robert with the same hairstyle. Yeah, hairstyle yeah. And he's just the funniest character yet a die-hard favorite with fans. He became ridiculously popular because he was such a friggin' joke. And you always used to do this hilarious move with Dan. Again, oh, try okay. to again. Yes, you see, that. Dan had, like, the characters in Art of Fighting, infinite taunting. Every other character, you can taunt them once. Dan, infinite, and depending upon what direction you push, you could jump and taunt, you go, Yahoo! Or you could push down and taunt, and he'd, like, crouch and go, Yarush! Or all these things, but if you did a super move, where you did the two fireball motions with the taunt button, he did the ultra taunt and he just he'd like ora 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 then he'd like rip his sleeve and then jump in the air no he didn't rip the sleeve he'd jump in the air pump the fist go yeah and all this stuff yeah. and then going yo yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it Absolutely. was and, and usually the second i finished i'd get you know super comboed for my efforts but right, but it was funny and whenever you like uh like we'd be having a match or whatever you'd pick dan and you'd always pick the yellow dan it'd always be banana dan the banana yeah the banana. And, and the odd time you'd pick him and you'd beat the crap out of me with him and you'd say you just got beat with a banana pal <laughs> Oh, yeah, you yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, I forget about that. I beat yeah, you with yeah, a banana. Yeah. I just and I, yeah, the thing is, you just take your time with him a little bit more and don't play him like yeah. right you can. No, no, no. Ridiculous. If He's you did definitely that. more a defensive character. Yeah. But he is actually a very technical character to 
play, which is funny. Yeah. Which is why he's still around now. Yeah. Uh, uh, so so classic. Uh, I I loved Alpha Two. It's just so many classic memories with it. So guys, we just want to share some of our fun memories playing Street Fighter Alpha Two on the PlayStation One. So anyways, guys, until next time.